Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. We're here today with the all-new Bobcat 265. So we just got our demo unit in here. Um, I've been checking it out and uh, playing with it. It's a pretty awesome little unit. So in this video, we're going to go over what the features, new features are on this, um, and then we're going to weld with the unit as well. So we're going to stick weld with it. Um, but let's just hop right into it. So noticeable change, right? LCD's display. Um, there's just a screen five by seven. We'll turn it on here, and you can you can function the whole unit without the engine running. Um, pretty awesome. So you can see it's it's very clear, very crisp. Um, we can go into processes here, and this thing has a wide array, so we can run a spool gun, self shielded flux core, GMW flux core with a spool or a suitcase. Uh, 7018, 6010, we can carbon arc with this, and we can TIG weld, uh, DC only on the TIG welding. Pretty awesome. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into 7018, and then we're going to jump in. So it gives us our amps, what we're going to be at. Now if I go, this unit has auto set as well. So if we punch auto set, got the, there we go, and it gives us our range of where we can be. That's our prime range, but then we can go up, it gives us a green area so from 115 to 135 and 125 being the target mark pretty awesome and then we can change electrode type our electrode diameter so if we're running 332 or 532 and then we can change our material thickness so that's pretty awesome I mean that, that's pretty cool for auto set on this on this unit um, just on the front of the unit that you can see we got USB port for updates firmware updates and then we got this particular model has the jump start or charge um, that you, that's an accessory and we'll attach that down below where you plug in and it comes with a jump ca jumper cables that plug in and then you can obviously charge or jump start something 12 or 24 volt systems pretty awesome and it's actually got a we'll go back, go back home here oh, give me one second here. then you can go into battery charge and you can tell it 12 volt or 24 volt charge and we're just going to say 12 volt selected and then you can charge and then when the engine's running it'll give you that function of do you want to jump start um, so it's a 150 amp charge and 300 amp jump start so it's a it's pretty neat uh, that it has that functionality now this unit has the jump start charge there's five different models to the 265 the other ones have various ranges they, they uh, propane and then you can get ones with arc reach um, this one no has the jump start on it. I'll show you down here. We got our cables hooked up, so we got our our uh, ends hooked on there. We got our 45 degree thing, so they come out of there real nice. It looks looks good. And then we got two two 40 volt plugs, um, so you don't have to have any adapter now. Just come in with one. It comes with a second one, um, and then it's got the giant breaker for those. And then we got our 120, which are GFCI. So we got a ground fault interrupter in there, and then we have our positive terminal here there again our 45 and then we have a 10 pin connector so you can hook a spool gun to this unit directly up to it you no longer need the wc24 that uh, you required with the older models now this model here though is 100 pounds lighter 13 percent smaller in size so shorter narrower um, they redesigned the airflow on this um, the engine faces forward now so it stays cooler the generator part stays cooler. You got 100% duty cycle at 265 amps, 28 volts. And then you have also 100% of the power capability. capability. So this thing will run 11,000 watt peak on the generator side, 9,500 watt continuous. And you got all that plus the welding output. So you, it, it's almost two separate right machines. You got full weld output and full generator power. Um, pretty awesome, pretty small. Uh, we got it on this on our table up here and i, I think it, it comes in just at about 380 pounds the whole unit does so weight reduction is huge um, it'll fit in the bed of a pickup easily we got 11 gallon fuel tank i'll walk over here on this side we got 11 gallon fuel tank we got our side door here side access panel we got our oil drain that comes with this so it's automatically it has a drain plug so you can dip it out and dump the oil, oil filter so Nice and open, easy, accessible. Um, now remember though, these do not come with oil or gas in them, so you gotta set them up when you buy that unit. And you gotta put the tailpipe on it, which is pretty easy, but it's all stuck inside with the owner's manual when they come. Um, it's 
So it's, it's actually, it's a very compact unit. Obviously then we got up here our open, our air filter, oil access, dipstick, everything that we need to do when we're checking everything. But that leads me into my next thing here. So this unit with the giant screen, we got some, we'll, we'll hit stop on that, we'll go home. So we're going to menu. So this has system settings, maintenance. This That's what I want to go over. So if we click on maintenance, and this is a big button, so you press on that. We got engine oil life, engine oil filter life, engine air filter, fuel filter, battery terminal. So it's given us, there's 96 hours remaining, so there's four hours on this engine drive. So we got 100 hour interval. Now you can customize that by hitting that, and then you can change how many hours you want to go on the oil. The, zero hour alert so you can change that alert to like say 20 hours it'll tell me that hey you got 20 hours left on your oil and then service log we'll go into well let me get back to sorry so we're in, if we go into service log it's going to tell us that we've never changed oil in this so if we were to hit reset right now it would document it into service log saying that we changed oil at four hours we're not going to do that because we don't need an oil change, but I'm just stating that we can change that. Obviously, the air filter. And then you get battery terminals. It just tells you to check the terminals at 100-hour interval. Spark plug, 200-hour. And brushes at 500-hour. So these are just factory settings in there. You can obviously customize those if you want. But I think that's, that's an awesome feature because it's going to give you a better idea of what, you know, where this thing's at. And you don't have to guess now that it's just a little hour meter up in the corner. And, you, you know, everyone always asks, well, how, how often do I need, this thing's going to tell you when you need to change it. So we'll go back, and then we'll go into system, oh, sorry, go into system settings. So weld lead calibration, we got it enabled. I changed my lead, it could come standard with 50 foot. I changed it to 10 foot because we got 10 foot leads, we got two out cable, and then you can adjust screen brightness as well. So you can see we can dim that down, or we can brighten it up. Pretty sweet. But the weld lead calibration, so what it's going to do is it, it's going to, keep full power at the end of the lead. So if you tell it you have a 100 foot lead, you know, we'll, we enabled it. Let's just change the cable length, see where we can go up to. Yeah, we can add, it goes all the way up. You know, so what it's gonna do is compensate. So it's gonna put out more power here to compensate for the lead drop or the lead length. So you're gonna drop voltage and amperage when you do that. We'll go back down to 10 now, click on that. So let's go back. And we'll go into system info. This is all your download service charts uh, where it tells you update firmware, reset error log, factory reset. We can factory reset this ourselves. Pretty awesome. And then we'll go down to productivity and it tells you that button is there we go. So total run, we got four hours, three hours of idle, one hour of welding. So that's pretty cool. It's going to give you auxiliary power, so how much generator time you had on this, how much welding time, and then how many idle hours are on this unit. Um, so it's going to give you all that information, and then it's going to give you troubleshooting as well. And that's when the engine's running, so it's going to give us engine RPM, voltage, current, and weld temp. So pretty awesome, has all this information, and uh, that way you can keep up to date on what, when this thing needs service, and you know how, what the intervals are. And if you notice up in the screen here, we got our gas gauge up here. So it's now a digital gas gauge and we're down in the orange. Um, when it's full, it's in the green. So we're uh, running a little low on gas, but no, no big deal. So we're gonna give this thing, thing a shot here and uh, try and weld with it. We got 718, we're gonna click on that. We're gonna go auto set. And then we're gonna change our, we got 330 second stick electrode. So it's getting us 70 amps. Uh, 718, we got 14 gauge material. Um, let's, I'll fire this up. It's a little bit loud, but uh, I'll shut it down after we get, after we get done welding with it and we'll try it out here. So let's fire it up.
so we can help here. Well, it's really nice. I uh, pretty impressed by the arc strike. I mean, the arc startup was nice. I, you notice it didn't it didn't stumble. The stick electrode didn't stumble. Um, so on some of them older engine drives, right at that startup, they would kind of jog a little bit. That, that ran good. Um, I just ran all those set settings, 70 amps. Um, uh, when I'm welding in the field with 337, sometimes I just, I usually run a little bit higher than that, but seemed to burn in there pretty good. I, that's pretty impressive. So, man, all in all, pretty awesome little unit for uh, for the price point. Before I close out this video, though, what we're going to try here, I got a Dynasty 210. We're going to plug it in. Um, our auxiliary power here. Uh, this Bobcat is rated to run the uh, Dynasty 210 series. And got that powered up. So what we're going to do, I'm going to fire this up and then I'll fire up the Dynasty and I'll show you that this generator will run that. with this Bobcat 265. Um, pretty awesome. So you can run both of them at the same time. I just want to give you a quick show of that, hey, this thing will come on. But stay tuned for some more videos. We're in, in the next ones, we're going to compare 265 to the 230. And then we're also going to try, in another video, try and break this screen and then replace it and put a new one in to show the ease, of, how easy it is to do that. And then how show how durable and how hard you got to smack that screen. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for some more.